My talk was about the uh, treatment of breast cancer. Uh, this is the metastatic breast cancer. Uh, you know that uh, breast cancer is the commonest kind of cancer worldwide, uh, and uh, this represents uh, close to 20% of the cancer load, uh, at least in our part of the world. Uh, lots of those patients uh, do present, uh, at least in our part of the world, with the metastatic disease. Uh, my talk was about uh, the, uh, using the uh, group of drugs and the uh, treatment of the, those with the hormone receptor positive uh, and the HER2 negative in a new class of drugs that called CDK4-6 inhibitors. Well, in the past, we had really only one option to treat those patients with the tamoxifen. Then we moved to the forward, we added aromatase inhibitor, then a drug really called the uh, fortvestrant. But those all three drugs, really, they always really have really, uh, resistance, and patients do progress really, after a while, on average after 10 to 12 months of starting those drugs. What's peculiar about really, those are the class of drugs, CDK4-6 inhibitors, uh, when added really, uh, orally, to the previously hormone therapy being tamoxifen, aromatase inhibitors, or fulvestrant, they modulated resistance and they added a lot to the, to the progression-free survivals. So on average, we have a close to two years the uh, disease-free survival using those drugs compared to only 10 months using aromatase inhibitors, for example. Uh, so this is really for the first time ever, we have really a class of drugs that would have really significant clinical impact into the uh, disease progression of those patients. More interestingly, actually, just recently, uh, the use of those drugs were associated with an overall survival advantage. Uh, a study was really presented uh, at ASCO just three weeks ago called the Monilis 7 trial, adding the, one of those drugs really called ribocyclob to uh, letrozole or tamoxifen uh, added a lot uh, uh, to progression-free survival and uh, quite significantly into overall survival too. So we're living now in a new era now that we're using an oral drug in addition to a previously known hormonal therapy, whatever it is, it is being tamoxifen or aromatase inhibitor, that have a significant impact into disease progression and for the first time ever, overall survival. Well, the, the problem with those drugs, really like everything else with the new medications, they're, they're a bit expensive. Uh, those really, until recently, uh, before we knew that those drugs really had really a survival advantage, there's lots to talk about today whether they are cost effective. Uh, how much you pay to, to add? There's a study which was published uh, just uh, three weeks ago looking into the cost effectiveness of those drugs in a clinical practice. So if you want to add the quality using the uh, balbocyclic, for example, you have to pay closer to 650,000 US dollars. In the case of RIPO, that's the really money closer to $450,000 uh, just to add the equality uh, into the life of those really patients. So with the, uh, if you put your cut off the uh, 100000 the really equality, which uh, lots of the uh, countries really do uh, at this level, then none of those drugs would be cost effective. However, uh, those really cost effectiveness need to be recalculated with the new data that those drugs really, they do have a survival advantage. So it's really probably a call for really, uh, since we have uh, three of those drugs, really, those are the really three companies are producing the drugs to compete into the price, cutting the price to make those drugs really, uh, in the clinical use, really, something that we, we can use really, to be a cost effective. Well, uh, there was really, uh, at least in the uh, one symposium really this week, there's a talk about uh, introducing some of those drugs in other uh, malignancies like in, in small cell lung cancer, but those are really, uh, still in an early phase of clinical trials. I just need to emphasize that uh, we uh, are approaching a new era actually, wherein we can treat the uh, metastatic breast cancer uh, who are hormone receptor positive, HER2 negative, with an oral medications with very minimal side effects. The side effects of those drugs are very predictable. Lots of neutropenia, yes, but that does not translate into fibrinol neutropenia. So all what you do is just really cut the dose a little bit or hold the drug for a week or so and reintroduce those drugs. So uh, it's a class effect. So the three drugs really, really have uh, almost the same uh, uh, efficacy and really all of those drugs really have really tolerable, predictable, and manageable uh, side effects.